Hey everybody, today we're talking about the mass airflow sensor, what it is, what it does, how we tune for it, all that fun stuff, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we're doing one of the supplemental videos that I talked about if you watched my math tuning video. Uh, I kind of went in some details on that that I was breaking down these videos so they weren't so long and so I was going to have tuning videos that just focused on the tuning side of it and then I was going to have videos that looked at some of the theories and the equipment and how things worked and why we tuned the way that we tuned all those kind of things. So if you're looking for the tuning video, I'll put a link over here in the corner for you. Jump over there. It's pretty condensed as much as can be and still be effective at showing you how to tune your map sensor. But I highly suggest if you have the time, stick around, watch this video, get to understand what you're doing a little bit better. So to start off, I'm gonna go ahead and try and put a little math sensor over here so you get an idea of what it looks like. You've probably seen it before. It is a sensor that sits in a tube in your intake track. And what it does is actually calculates the mass of the air that the engine is breathing in. That's why it's called a mass airflow sensor. The way that it does that is that there is an element within that sensor that it is trying to maintain a temperature. As air goes across that element, it, it basically shifts what is called the Hertz reading on that thing, and it uses that combined with another calculation that's based off the diameter of your intake tube to calculate the mass. The nice thing about that is, is that your mass is always going to line up when it doesn't matter you know if it's colder outside your air density changes if it's warmer outside you know your air is less dense if you once you get that curve dialed in it doesn't matter altitude doesn't affect the mass none of that it does affect it but it doesn't affect the way that that sensor reads it i should say so having a well dialed in mass airflow sensor means that you're going to have the flexibility to take your vehicle anywhere and it's going to read very well the nice thing about it is is it's very good for the low area in the cruising speeds it works together great with closed loop which has your o2 sensors tied in for small in incremental corrections like the long-term and short-term fuel trims that combined with your mass airflow sensor provides you a very stable fueling platform. Has a tendency to break up in the higher airflow areas. And so whenever we switch over to boost or if we're running wide open throttle pulls, that's why things shift over to a speed density table. And that's the one that you need to be more cognizant of different elevations, altitude changes, air densities, and things like that shifting on you. Whereas, as I said, once you get the tune uh, dialed in on your mass airflow sensor across what we call the MAF curve, you should be good to go from that point on. So, that all being said, what are some of the issues that we run into on mass airflow sensors? Well, the, the big one that everybody seems to hit and doesn't realize what's going on is whenever you change your tubing size, you're throwing that calculation out of whack. That's why you need to tune. A lot of the cold air intakes out there that are on the cheaper side of things might actually change that diameter of that tubing, and they will throw your tuning off, and they can be potentially dangerous, or they can actually make your vehicle run too rich, robbing you of power. A well-engineered one, though, will take that into account and make sure that that's all good to go before they send it out if it is a true bolt-on, plug-and-play style air intake or cold air intake. Another issue is, is that you need to have straight what they call laminar flow across the sensor to get accurate readings. And that just means that you want to have, if you have a section of pipe, you want to have it towards the end of the section of pipe so the air has time to settle out and straighten out down the pipe. General rule of thumb whenever we're doing liquids measurements, which, uh, you know, air is technically works like a liquid in, in this situation, is to have at least three times the diameter of the tube uh, you know, if straight pipe upstream of the sensor. So if you're running a two inch diameter tube, you want to have six inches at least. The more you can have, the better off that you're going to be. If you get that thing too close to a bend, it can get all kinds of air currents and eddies in there that causes it to not read correctly. So that's something to take into account. The other issues that we run into whenever we go into forced induction is we have a tendency to exceed the math. All of these things, for the most part, are only designed to work on stock cars. 
you know, so unless your vehicle was set up for boost, and even if it was from the factory, there's a good chance if you up the boost or you add boost, you will exceed the range of the map. And the way to fix that is to, well, there's a couple ways. The first one that's the easiest, sort of, is to do away with math. You can actually tune your speed density tables, your, your dynamic airflow tables, and then run off of those strictly and not, not even have to run a mass airflow sensor. You'll see that a lot on the, the uh, higher horsepower cars that are making a lot of boost. The other solution that's, that's a little bit easier maybe, but requires more hardware, is to get a bigger intake pipe. So the bigger that intake pipe is, the lower in the frequency range that sensor is gonna read for the same amount of airflow but that requires you to adjust that curve because you will now have a new curve because you have changed that uh, calculation as it were. So that's something to think about. That's what I've done on this one. I exceeded the math originally. I stepped the, pot, the uh, intake pipe a half inch, then went through and returned, retuned it. And now I've got some headspace on there. Uh, but those are your two main solutions on the, on the math tuning. I'm to the point now where I'm about to do away with mine and go speed density, but that's more because I'm looking at switching over to an air to water intercooler. And I'm just not really gonna have the straight amount of pipes unless I add excess pipe. That's not something I wanna do in order to keep the math. And this is not a daily driven vehicle. Honestly, that's where the mass airflow sensor benefits you the most is if you are using it in a daily driven vehicle. So that all being said, let's go ahead and see if we can't put a, uh, a math curve down here so you see what it looks like. It's gonna just kind of have a curve that goes up towards the end as the, your, uh, the mass of the air that you're flowing in the engine increases. And, and all we're doing is basically, that is a representation of all the calculations that are being done through the sensor, through the uh, diameter of the tubing. All that is represented and then that is translated into basically what your fueling is gonna be. It can either be in hertz or it can be in pounds per hour. Uh, both of those constitute basically the same thing. It's just your preference. I like to tune mine in hertz because that is the raw reading of the MAF sensor itself. And so I draw a direct correlation between the hertz and the fueling. So that's kind of the big thing on the map sensor. It's really simple, it's really easy to work with. Uh, as I've said in the past, if you are doing the removal of the map sensor, double check your setup, make sure that, that the intake air temperature sensor is not integrated into your map sensor. Your map sensor is not necessarily using it, that's part of your speed density or your dynamic airflow tuning, but it may be a part of the sensor to make it all one assembly. And so you may have to get a breakout harness and install another sensor you know, elsewhere, somewhere down the, the uh, intake track. Uh, also, if you're running uh, methanol injection, you want to inject between the MAF and the intake or the throttle body. And if you are doing that and the air temp sensor is in the MAF, you need to break it out and put it after the methanol injection because you cool the air charge so much that speed density will go very crazy uh, whenever you inject methanol or even a blend, methanol water blend, if you do not have that air intake downstream of the methanol injection. Just something to, to keep in mind. But that pretty much wraps up uh, mass airflow sensors. You know, I've already done one on speed density. I've also done a video specifically on speed density tuning. And this one is just a supplemental one that goes along with math tuning. So if you have any questions, there's a comment section down below. I'm pretty good about getting back to people very quickly on some of these things. Don't be afraid to ask. And, uh, you know, if you enjoyed this video along with the rest of the tuning series, which you can find down in the description, throw a thumbs up my way. And if you haven't already subscribed, there's going to be content just coming out left and right. You don't want to miss out on it. But I want to thank you for the taking the time to stop by the garage and we'll see you next time.